If you've never used pattern blocks to teach fractions, you are about to be mind blown. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video because I will share how you can get the math mat that I'm using for free to use with your students. Let's go ahead and dive in. If we want students to be successful with solving problems like two and a half times one and one third, then we've really got to go back to the beginning of the progression or the learning trajectory for multiplying fractions. So the first time that the standards call for multiplying fractions in most states is in fourth grade, and that is multiplying a whole number by a fraction. Now, there are two different ways that we can look at this, but for the most part, in fourth grade, students are meant to look at this problem in a multiple groups situation. So that means that three and two thirds means three groups of two thirds. Now this builds really nicely off what students know about multiplication with whole numbers from third grade. So in that situation, they came across a problem like three times a fourth, and they view it as, or they understand it as three groups of four. Well, when we get to fourth grade and we start working on multiplying a whole number times a fraction, that three times two thirds just it's pretty easy for students to understand and visualize and model. Now, one thing that's really important, and you'll see this throughout this video, is that we provide context to the numbers. So let's think of three times two thirds as three scoops of dog food and each scoop is two thirds of a cup. So we have two thirds of a cup and another two thirds of a cup and another two thirds of a cup. And that is three groups of two thirds. So that is multiple groups. Let's take a look at what this looks like to model it with pattern blocks on our math mat. Okay, so we are gonna model three times two thirds, which in this situation we know is three groups of two thirds because we are working with multiple groups or equal groups. And so we've got three groups of two thirds. Let's go ahead and model one group of two thirds. And so this would be one group. And if you look at our math mat here, we've got three whole groups up here. We've got halves, thirds, and fourths. And so we'll be using that throughout this activity. So here we've got one group of two thirds. We've got another group of two thirds. And then we have another group of two thirds. And so to figure out what the total value of three groups of two thirds are, we need to go ahead and combine them for our answer. So I could say that it's six thirds, put our answer sticky note here. I could say that it is six thirds because we know that all together we've got six thirds here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or if I were to kind of do some regrouping here, I could see that six thirds is also two holes. So our answer is six and six thirds or two. Now that students have grasped what it looks like to solve multiplication problems with fractions in a multiple group situation, that is typically where most fourth grade standards stop. But there is another type of multiplication situation that we can fall into with multiplying a whole number by a fraction. And this is partial groups. So instead of three groups of two thirds, we're thinking about this in a two thirds of three situation. This is why context is key because on paper, three times two thirds and two thirds times three they have the same product, so how are they different? But let's add a little context and you'll see very clearly how these two things are different. So when we're talking about this partial groups type of thinking, let's start with part of a group. So a fraction by a whole number. So let's use the same context. We've got three cups of dog food. So two thirds of the three scoops of dog food were spilled. Now, the reason this isn't multiple groups and the reason we wouldn't model it as two thirds and two thirds and two thirds is because let's think about this in this situation. If we were to view it as multiple groups, that would mean that two thirds of this scoop was spilled and two thirds of this scoop was spilled and two thirds of this scoop was spilled. And that's not the case here. What it's saying is we're taking part of this group of scoops and two thirds of them were spilled. So it's a different type of action here and it's a different type of thinking. And that's why in most states with most standards, this is a fifth grade concept. 
A lot of times teachers who are expected to teach multiplying a whole number by a fraction will kind of pull problems and not realize that these are two different types of thinking, one of which students may not be ready for. So in just a sec, I'm gonna show you how to model this with our pattern blocks and our math map. But before we do that, I want us to focus on another type of partial groups type thinking, and that is part of a part. And so that just means still kind of the same thing. We're finding instead of part of a group, we are finding part of another part. So instead of two thirds of three, maybe it's two thirds of one half. So we're gonna look at both of these problems with our math pat and our pattern blocks now. All right, so let's take a look at two thirds of three or two thirds times three. In this situation, two thirds of the three cups were spilled. So let's go ahead and model three cups. So three cups would be three whole cups. And we wanna split this group right here into thirds. So let's go down here and take a look at our thirds. And we know if we were to split this into thirds, one whole would be in each third. Now, we want to look at two thirds of this group. And so we will look at just these two thirds. So I don't need this final third. So we can see here that two thirds, one third of three would be one, two thirds of three, would be two, we can see that two thirds of three is actually two holes. So it said that two thirds of the three cups had been spilled. How many cups had been spilled? Two whole cups. Now the second problem I mentioned was part of a part. So instead of finding part of that whole group, so two thirds of three, now we're looking at part of a part. And so let's take a look at how we would model two thirds times one half, so two thirds of one half. So if we're adding a little bit of context to this situation, we could say that the dog ate two thirds of a bag of dog food and the bag of dog food was a half a pound. So he ate two thirds of that half pound. How much did the dog eat? So let's start by modeling one half. So we've got one half here and we wanna find two thirds of this. So just like we had to split the three holes, that one group, we had to split three holes into thirds. Well, now we need to split this half into thirds. And so we can't do it the way it is. So we'll have to do a little bit of replacing. And so I know that I can turn this into sixth because one half is equivalent to three sixths. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna exchange, you can see, I'm gonna exchange this one half for three six. So this is still finding two thirds of a half. This is still a half here, but now we can split it into thirds. So let's go ahead and split it into thirds. And just like our last problem, we want two thirds of this. So one third of one half would be one sixth, two thirds of one half would be two six, and three thirds or a whole group of one half would be three six, which is one half. So that makes sense. So let's take this away because we only want two thirds. And so here I can see that two thirds of one half is two sixths. And so here we have found part of a part. All right, there's one last step in the progression for multiplying fractions, but before we jump into that, I want you to take a second to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have learned something new up to this point. I love to know if this is helpful because then I know that I can make more videos like this in the future. Okay, so the very last step in the progression for multiplying fractions is really just mix and matching the multiple groups type of thinking and the partial groups type of thinking. So what this looks like is, let's say two and a half times four. Well, two and a half times four is two groups of four and half of four. So two groups of four, multiple groups, half of four, that partial groups type thinking. So you could do that, you could do four and a half times one fourth, that is uh, multiple groups and part of a group. So you're really just mixing and matching these two types of thinking to really solve any fraction multiplication problem that students are given. So one last time, let's look at our math mat and our pattern blocks to see how we would model these problems. So our very last step in this progression is combining both types of thinking. So let's take a look at two and one third times four. So two and one third times four. This is two and one third groups of four. So in this situation, it might be 
that throughout the week, the dog ate two and one third containers of dog food and inside each container there was four pounds. So we've got two and one third groups of four. So let's go ahead and start by modeling four. Okay, so we've got two and one third groups. So here's one group. We need a second group. So we've got two groups of four. I'll spread them out so that way y'all can see them. So, so far we've modeled two groups of four. Now we need one third of a group of four or one third of four. Well, let's take our four here and we need to split it into thirds. We may have to do some exchanging here. So let's see. I know I can put one hole into each of the thirds. So now I've got to figure out a way to split this hole into thirds here because we know that we've got to have these in equal groups. So I'm going to exchange it for thirds right here. So I've still got four holes here, but now I can put them into thirds and we want one third of four. So we just need this section right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take away these. And now I have modeled two and one third groups of four. And so our answer, we know we need to combine all of these together. So we've got four, eight, nine, and one third. So our answer is nine and one third. So let's look at two and one half times two and one third. So we've got two and a half groups of two and one third. Okay, well, let's start by modeling one group of two and one third. So here we've got two and one third, and we know we need two and a half groups of two and one third. So let's model that second whole group of two and one third. So we've got two and one third, and now we need to model half of two and one third. So let's start with our whole group here. So we've got whole, so we've got two and one third but we need to split this into half. So we are gonna go over to our half section here. And so it's pretty easy for me to go ahead and split the two holes into half because I just put one hole in each of the halves. And now I'm gonna have to do a little exchanging here. And so because I've worked with pattern blocks and I understand them, I know that I can exchange one third with two sixths and that would give me those two pieces. So now I can split this third into two groups or into half. Now, so far we've modeled our multiple groups. We've got the two whole groups of two and one third. And so here we just modeled our part of a group by finding half of two and one third. You can see we still have two and one third here. We've just split it in half and we're only looking for one half so I can remove this other half. And now we have successfully modeled two whole groups of two and one third and a half a group of two and one third. And let's combine all of these to find our answer. So let's take all of our holes here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got five holes and I've got these pieces right here. Now, there's a couple ways that I could look at this. I could look at this and say, okay, well this is one sixth away from a hole, so I know that this is five six, or I could have exchanged each of these for two six and another two six, and that would make this last one the fifth six. But either way, I know that my answer here is five and five six. Okay, that was a lot. But before I tell you how to get this free math mat, I want you to know that if you loved this video, if you wanna know how to make other fraction concepts hands-on and you wanna actually see it in action with me modeling these problems out, I want you to take a look at Mix and Math 360. That is our membership exclusively for fourth and fifth grade math teachers where we prioritize building your own understanding of the concepts and showing you exactly how to make these concepts hands-on for students. We know that students learn best when they are learning in a hands-on way and they're excited about what they're learning. So head to this link if you are a fourth or fifth grade teacher or you work with fourth or fifth grade students and you are wanting to join an amazing community of math teachers. As promised, 
here's your freebie. So head to the link below and you will just have to enter your name and your email and I will send you this Actions with Fractions math map that you can print out, assemble, and give to your students and apply everything that you learned in this video. If you wanna learn more about using math manipulatives in Upper Elementary, check out one of the videos beside me.